for your presence. Jesus, you're the author and the finisher of our faith. We love and adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Matt, just make sure his keyboard is off and the other mic is off. You know, I want to talk to you today. You know, I, I notice I always say that every time I preach. I want to talk to you today. I've been saying that for years. I want to talk to you today, like as if I'm saying I want to talk to you tomorrow. But it just seems right to say that. I want to talk to you today about judgment. It's, uh, I didn't really wrestle with this, but I had a little, a little battle. Because talking about judgment, everyone gets nervous because they don't know whether or not it's a topic they should be concerned with. And it's something that we all should be concerned with. And when you look in the book of Revelation, I don't have time to go there, it talks about the people or the types of people that will spend their judgment in the lake of fire eternally separated from God. And how many of you here? Anybody here? If, you, if you're alive, wave at me. Anybody here ever went to school? The three of y'all that didn't wave, I guess y'all are dead folk up in here. But anybody here ever went to school? Amen. If you ever go to school, I, uh, watch this. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> if you ever go to school, if you don't pay attention and they give you a test right there, you'll fail. When you look in the book of Revelation, you see the people that are going to spend eternity in hell. That's the first place to start. See if your name is in there. Everybody's name is somewhere. Either you're written in the Lamb's Book of Life or you're written on the rolls of hell. So go to the book of Revelation. See if you're going to hell. Look at somebody and say, are you going to hell? Are you going to hell? <laughs> And you know, and so what happens is, is even though church is corny and this and that, it's the only place that can keep you out of hell. And the Bible says that the church is the pillar in the ground of the truth. So when I began to think about teaching this, which is a very, very touchy topic because everybody wants to do what they want to do. And, it, you know, and I had a conversation with some people that were pretty successful, professional people. They're, you know, wise people that graduated, got their doctorate, got their masters. Very, very, say this with me in English, say intelligent. intelligent. They were very intelligent people, and I began to listen to them. And one thing they had in common is they did good in school. They did good in school. Say school. And what happens is the Bible is school. Not church. The Bible, the word of God is our school. The Bible even called the law a schoolmaster, which tutored people until they were able to listen to God directly. And so when I talk to you today about judgment, I, want, I don't want you to get nervous. I want you to get it right. You know, um, I dye my hair. You know, it's like, I'm like Santa Claus right now. It's kind of white. But I got, I got like $6, I go to the store and I get this thing in a box, right? And they call it just for men. I'm sure women could use it too. And I chemical the thing up and I put it in my hand. Bam! It goes from gray to brown or if I want it to be black, you know. But I use it. You see, God has given us judgments to use to change situations. Now, last, you know, if I was to smack some of you, some of you would break down and cry and say, why did he do that? Others would have a flashback and really just go off on me. <laughs> I mean, nobody going to put their hands on me. You know, see, it's, it's how you learn. And so judgment, this is, you got to hear this. If you don't hear this now, you're going to be very, very lost in the message. Judgment is how you see things. That's why people say, can't nobody judge me. Well, how long you been on the planet? You're going to be judged all your life. When you were a baby and you, and you went to the bathroom, nobody just said, well, just leave him like that. They judged it. Yo, you stink. We're going to have to make a judgment and wash you up and clean you up. So the word of God is designed to judge them that want to live right. 
That's why people avoid the word of God. They don't want to live right. They just want to live and go to heaven. It don't work like that. And this may seem like a, a bad scenario, so I won't put myself in it. You know, how many ever been to Deacon Matt's house? You want to know why? You weren't invited. Right? And if you didn't know how to act, then definitely you wasn't getting in. Why do you think you're going to heaven? Right? You act like the devil in the earth won't let nobody judge you, and you think you're just going to walk up into heaven as if God is waiting for you. Yes. Come on, help me, three of y'all. Because I want to talk to you about being judged and the importance of it in growing up. Yes. See, we're, we're, the, the church is breeding um, a weak group of individuals that all they want to do is go to church, give God a tip, play songs that sound worldly enough for them to enjoy, and say they have a good time. Come on, that's that you know that's gonna send you and the rest of them to hell. When I was talking to these individuals, one of them is a surgeon, you know, and, and the other person said if there was gonna be two A's given out in the class, that person was gonna get one of them. And the other person looked like, Yeah, of course, I'm gonna get the A. But we have a group of believers that don't care about an A. They don't mind getting an F. Thinking that grace is going to get them in. I'm sliding on in on that F. <laughs> faith. F means faith, right? <laughs> no. F means fail. Flunk. Fly away. <laughs> and you know, um, I was just, I'm, I'm being a little natural because my message is going to be a little hard. So I'm going to have to give these analogies now to give you like, um, what they call that? Anesthesia? It's like when you have a bad hair day. You comb it this way, it don't work. You comb it that way, it don't work. Why didn't it work? It worked. You just judged it that it don't work. Whenever you judge things, you change. So don't, don't despise judgment. When somebody tell you you're wrong, if you're wrong, say, I'm sorry. Because there's a group of people being raised in churches. They're already in their house. You know, like a young boy. Anybody have a new young boys? Like they're 14, they have sex. First thing they do, they got to show their man, you can't tell me what to do. Then they're out, they got to sell drugs and get killed, five of them, right? The other six got to go to jail. And they wonder why they're in there, because nobody could tell them what to do. And it's not society. It was your choice. You can't have sex at 14 and think you a man. Just because you do what grown-ups do don't mean you have the ability to stay grown. Right. Come on. You got to judge. Oh, wow. Come on, child. She must be 18. But see, the word of God is designed to judge us. And go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. If I had all day, I would preach every verse I have, but I don't have all day. But I want you to just get some some truths because when you're weak you're not going to want nobody to judge you 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 says this for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves <coughs> excuse me there, here we go but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves amongst themselves are not wise give you, I'll give you that in English People that judge themselves amongst their peers are not very wise. Amen. You can be one of them. You can be a Christian that because no one else is doing that, you think you're better because you're not. It said they judging themselves amongst themselves, they're not wise. Our standard and our level of judgment is not our peers. It's not the other members in the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our level will always be Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And we will always come, sh and we will always fall short. Yes, and that keeps us humble yes. and out of trouble. Yes, Anybody ever play basketball? I know you do skateboard. Can you play basketball? Now, Isaiah think he could play basketball. You know, Deborah's son. A lot of kids. I remember Matt when he was young and George and all. They all thought they could play basketball. I don't understand what happens to kids. I think they see too many videos. So I played them and they saw they can't play once they saw me play. <laughs> it's just a reality that every young man needs to understand. You ain't got no game. 
You don't. I mean, it's a, it's a fairy tale to a lot of kids. Why do you think they could buy $100 sneakers and they can't even play? When I grew up, you didn't wear sneakers if you couldn't play. All this money for them sneakers, they're going to do nothing for you but give you what? A compliment? You can't play. All right, let me get back to the story. So when I was young, and we used to play basketball, and, you know, it was one court with a lot of people. And if you lost, the next team would come on. But I was so good that I didn't care whether we lost. Because when I looked around to see who was going to play next, I knew that they would want to pick me if they wanted to have a chance to win. I'm telling you the truth. But then when I saw other, play, other people come that I knew could play better than me, I started playing better because I knew if I lost, I wouldn't get back in the game. That's how it is in Christianity. You got to understand something. Just because they fall don't mean you have a right to near fall. Our standard is Jesus Christ himself who fell not. Come on. You be weak all you want. Well, I, I, I pray before I eat my food. That's not praying. That's blessing your food. Praying is asking God for help. I hate my boss. I hate my husband. I hate my wife. But help me. Come on. That's prayer. You know, I was thinking about why so many marriages fail. Because either the husband or the wife don't judge themselves. They wait for the spouse to judge them. And once the spouse judges them, they're going to hit the point. You're going to hit them. Amen. Come on. Judge not, lest you be judged. I'm going to look at that because when Jesus was saying that, he said, but if you do judge, just make sure you're right. That's right. That's right. Anybody ever heard the story? I'm not, we don't have to read everything because it's not a baby class. You ever remember the story when Jesus says, when you judge... Make sure you don't have a beam in your own eye. Did you know what he said after that? And this is going to bless you. Look at somebody say, I'm about to be blessed. He said, take the beam out your eye and then judge him. He never said, don't judge him. He said, just don't judge him with something in your eye. So as a believer, you, you best be, this, I'm not from the South, but you best be judging. Because soon you're going to be judged. Y'all went to court? <laughs> Some of y'all, right? Don't lift your hands. And that judge didn't go like that. Ah, it's all right. We're under grace. Here, go. Go. Praise the Lord on your way out. <laughs> that judge, judge. Nah. Six months. You wrong. I'll give you more. You want more? I'll give you more. <laughs> right? We're still in the earth. And the earth is designed to be ruled by words. Judgments. And if you want to be a strong Christian, you have to put yourself under strict judgment. Yes, amen. You can't study half the day and not learn. <laughs> Come on now. But you're going to study three minutes and think, I got this, I got this. And I'm going to pray and the Lord's going to move and watch me get an A. You're going to be, a, you're going to be an AF. <laughs> After thought. So we have to make application. You have to learn what God requires of us in order for us to judge ourselves so that no one else has to judge us. You know, many times you come to church because it's the right thing to do. And sometimes I come to church to get help. I want to find out why I don't have this. What's wrong in my life? I don't want Pastor Rich to tell me something nice and I know I'm wrong. Amen. I got to listen to him just like you. But look at me like, isn't he Pastor Rich? Yeah, he got it. I got a mouth, but I got two ears too. Because right. I don't have no notes. But look at somebody and say, I'm ready to be judged. Yeah. Y'all ain't say it like your minute. I'm going to give me my last, next to the last analogy. There was this girl, real, real, you know, not nominal girl. And almost ugly duckling close, close, real close to ugly duckling. And one guy said, I want to marry her. Guess what? She changed. She said, he, he want to marry me? She got clean, washed her face, combed her hair. She did whatever she needed to do to make sure he came through with his judgment. You ever heard of the five wise and the five foolish virgins? They all had a chance to judge right. Five of them judged wrong. 
And the, and, the, and the Bible clearly says, in the book of Revelation, it says the bride has made herself ready. Now look at somebody say, we're talking about, but yeah, look at somebody do it, say, we're talking about judgment. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. And I want to read this, it's going to be a little long, but I'm going to tell you the story ahead of time, which is my style of teaching. I think if I tell you the story, when you read it, faith can come into you and you can learn from it. The church got into some situations where they didn't judge it right. So Paul came and kind of rebuked them, telling them, don't you know, one day you're going to have to judge the world. And then one day you're going to have to judge angels. Now. If I sound like I'm rebuking anybody, if you feel like that, then I'm rebuking you. And a 